Good day, folks. I'd like to show you basically Don Smith, basically one of his secrets in its most simple form. Here is essentially a very crude Don Smith working principles. And I wanted to show you this because it's very important and a lot of people would like to know. So what we have here is two antenna coils, essentially two high Q coils. So one is approximately um, 40 windings and the other one is approximately 80 windings. Essentially, this would be the drive antenna and this would be the receiving antenna over here. So I have some equipment that helps me determine systems and I will explain to you what this is. This is a frequency analyzer, frequency counter and SWR analyzer. So in radio terms, because we're playing with RF here, very important. So this is also a frequency generator and I can adjust the ranges here. So what's the range of interest right now is about 100 megahertz. Yes, you heard right, 100 megahertz. But remember, this is being just test equipment to do an analyzer on antennas and impedances and that sort of thing for matching for resonant conditions. So this only needs like a few nanoamps to drive. So very minimal, but still a good trigger to test the coil. So what happens here is the meter allows me to monitor the reflections. So in other words, I'm able to see through this meter here if our secondary is interfering at all with the primary. Either it's sipping energy away or it's reflecting as um, essentially an inductive kickback or back EMF into the system loading it some more. So thanks to the meter's movement, I can get an indication of what's going on. And now what's very interesting is at very high frequency, like at 100 megahertz range, if you have a high Q condition, the high Q, which happens to be the reactive area of the field, is above the wavelength. So here it's about 27 inches away. Up to that, you end up having back. So what I'm getting at is the in a high Q system, the E and M components are very independent. And as you get away from the um, reactive field and get into the radia, radiative field, it ends up being 90 degrees in phase as basically regular AC. So you end up having, if you're too far away, restrained by how much of the field strength you're given at that area. So even though you don't load the transmitter at that distance, you're still limited by the microscopic amount of field strength and if already phased, 90 degree EM waves so you can't individually tap into the E or the M at this point so you still get a very minimal current but nothing no amplification no nothing so what I'm getting at is there's a sweet spot and in the very low frequency ranges like even in the kilohertz that could be hundreds of feet so it's hard to get in that sweet zone but as you get into the megahertz range that sweet zone opening is within an inch or so so when you're in that zone, essentially additional coils in the reactive zone just trigger a magnetic resonance phenomenon through RF. So they are not directly coupled. So what happens here is the E field in this one stays contained and doesn't couple like transformer action into this one here. But this one through the resonant magnetic field will generate its own E field independent within its own loop without affecting with the primary E field. So we get a sense of decoupling the EM with RF mechanisms when you're in the reactive field, but only in the reactive field. And the frequency will determine exactly that distance. So you, ne you actually need equipment to find this out. You can't just do it with trial and error. This is what I'm gonna show you. So the meter here injects an RF at 100 megahertz roughly into this coil. So I'm going to turn this on now. I'm going to put this far away here to start. So this is just a transmitter, high Q. We turn this on and you will notice the meter goes really almost in the red because right now it's a high reflective power because it's high Q. So a lot of that is being reflected. So it's detecting, you know, a, a, a reflection state, which is what's expected for a high Q. Now in RF systems, this would be very bad because it means the transmitter, you know, like a Bedini is getting inductive, the equivalent of inductive kickbacks and wouldn't be able to sustain this for very long. But for the sake of the experiment, it's good enough to know because this gives me an indicator. Now what would happen is if I put a secondary nearby, 
if this SWR meter here moves more to the red, it means that it's feeling a reflection back, so it's an opposing field interfering with it. If the meter starts going down this way back into the one, it means that we're absorbing some of that load, so it's acting like more of a transformer action, which we don't want. So what I'm going to show you is right now the meter is far away, so the antenna anyway, so it's not coupled. But see what happens when I get real next to it here, like right next to it. Look what happens to our meter here. It goes way up in the red because we're very close. So now it's detecting that reflective wave back in and it's showing we have much less efficiency because our load is working, our input is working much long, much harder. So if you look at the scope here I'm connecting to it, there's the waveform at 104 megahertz and it's de detecting about 300 microvolts here. So what we're going to do is going to start changing the distance. And as I change the distance, you'll see the meter change a lot. I'm moving it just a little bit and look at the meter dynamics change here. The meter is going down as I'm increasing the distance because now it's not feeling the reflection but now we're in an area here where it's acting more like a traditional transformer and it's and it, it's uh, transferring part of its energy back in here so if you look at the scope now we have a much stronger reading because it's more of a traditional coupling at this point 600 microvolts again this is not the component we're actually looking for so with a little bit more tuning I'm going to increase the distance and at a certain point it's not going to matter anymore and the meter is going to go back in the red into its original state like there was nothing there see it's slowly climbing and I'm bringing up the distance here slowly climbing there's going to be a point where it's not going to do it like see now it's not doing anything no more so this is the sweet spot right here now whatever is coming in here it's going to be a little bit weaker 340 microvolts for this experiment but whatever's happening here is completely decoupled now from here. This isn't feeling it no more. It's like it's not there at all. So it doesn't matter how we load this. It's generating its own E-field through pure magnetic resonance within the reactive zone, which seems to be about half of the distance of the coil, total coil length at this frequency, ironically, at 100 megahertz. So essentially, this would then charge your capacitors or whatever you want without stressing this load so now basically the secret is put multiple coils if that's what you want to do like some others have done and you can stack up on that as long as the distance is right without affecting because your load is gonna use whatever it needs to keep the high q triggered whether there's an antenna there or not at the right spot but that spot is very fine you see it, it's it's either there or it's not, and you need this equipment to find it, because I would have never have found it just by even looking at the scope here. But with the two equipment, I'm able to find out exactly where the sweet spot is. So it's just to show you, to demonstrate, again, I could short this out, and it wouldn't change the meter here. In fact, I can remove this completely out of the way, and the meter is still in the same area but we're no longer really coupled no more because we're too far away from the wave. So I'm just going to do a redo the test here. Start again, real slow, move it away. See now it's absorbing, it's absorbing, it's absorbing, it's absorbing, it's absorbing really. That's its maximum coupling there, but this is not the component I'm looking for. Oh, now it's going back the other way. That's good, that's good. I want to bring it back to its initial almost there almost there uh, about there now it's not doing anything we're back to what we were before and this basically comes in for free now just like a tune radio station this is like one of the many receivers that don't bog down the transmitter exactly the same mechanism it's a magnetic resonance phenomena we basically decouple the magnetic from the electric here we establish a new path it's magnetic resonance which triggers a closed emf electric field within its own loop 
on this side here. So obviously the more high Q you make the system, the higher voltage output you get, which amounts as well to more current output without stressing the input. But of course you know there is a theoretical limit to how much you can interact with the reactive field. If you overload it, it's going to start swamping itself, but it's highly, highly nonlinear and it's very minuscule to, to keep the resonant uh, condition active. But just there is a theoretical limit of, you know, maybe after a hundred of these, you won't have enough on your input just to maintain the field that vibrates all of these to trigger it, right? So just to keep that in mind, but generally speaking, um, the sky is the limit, folks. And frequency range matters as well. The higher in frequency, the better it is. But at some point, once you get, you know, beyond 100 megahertz, it's too difficult to make the right coil windings for the high Q conditions at that frequency. Your Tesla coils end up being three inches. It's not enough to, to, to work with, really, with all the coupling factors and everything. So again, I just wanted to put that out there. Very, very interesting effect that people must understand if they're getting into the Don Smith RF stuff. Again, thank you very much for watching and I hope this explains a few things.